Our first step is to try to draw a free body diagram of the person. And in order for us to do that, what we'll do first is extend the line of these crutches. So we're just gonna draw a sort of guideline or a reference line extending from the first crutch and then do the same thing extending from the second crutch. And then we can see that they sort of converge right on the man's nose here. And we're gonna draw a horizontal guideline as well. These are just reference lines right now. We have to sort of simplify the scenario here and imagine that all of the mass of the individual can be concentrated into a single point. This would be considered his center of mass. And then we can begin to sort of analyze the forces acting on that center of mass. Now, of course, we have this crutch located on the lower left of the diagram sort of pushing up and to the right on the man in order to support him. And we're gonna call that force F1. And then similarly, the other crutch is pushing up and to the left on the man's mass in order to support it. We're gonna call that F2. We have the ground pushing up on the man. We're gonna call that the normal force. And then we have the gravitational force acting downward, which we can call Mg. Now from a little bit of geometry knowledge here, we might be able to figure out some useful angles here. Now this angle right there is the same as this angle here, which is given as 22 degrees. And then if we sort of go across from that angle, we see that that angle right there would also be 22 degrees. And by a similar argument, we can say this angle here is 22 degrees. So it's a bit cluttered, so what we decided to do is sort of expand it or magnify it here to show the full glory of the free body diagram. This is indeed our first step. And we hopefully notice from this diagram that we have added in the value of his gravitational force. It was given to us as 170 pounds, so we've included that in the diagram. We, will, we were also told here that half of the person's weight is, of course, supported by the crutches, but the other half is supported by the vertical forces exerted by the ground on his feet. So that's just the normal force. And again, half of his weight will be supplied by that normal force here, or will be sort of balanced by the normal force. So right here, we've taken his weight and have divided it by two to show that the normal force would indeed be 85 pounds. So now our next step is to start applying Newton's second law to the free body diagram. Now we have to do this in two different directions. You're going to have to apply Newton's second law in the x direction. So we can say the sum of the forces acting in the x direction is equal to the mass multiplied by the acceleration in the x direction. So we're gonna to try to investigate the forces exclusively acting in the x direction. And in order to do that, you'd have to draw in the components. So let's go over and have a look at F1. And hopefully we can see that the Y component of F1 would be pointing straight up. And then the X component would be pointing to the right, like so. Now we might wanna give some labels to this. We're gonna call the Y component F1Y. And then the X component right in there can be labeled F1X. We need to come up with some useful expressions. Remember, particularly we're interested in the X component. You'll notice that we form a right triangle here. And we know it's a right triangle because right there is a 90 degree angle. We're going to use the sine function on that right triangle. Notice that the sine of the 22 degree angle, which is this angle right here, is equal to the opposite side of that angle. The opposite side would be the x component, so it would be F1x, over the hypotenuse, which is F1. Now we can solve that by multiplying both sides of the equation by F1. This cancels the F1s on the right-hand side, and this shows us that the x component can be represented as F1 times the sine of 22 degrees. Now by a similar line of reasoning, we can look at the x component of F2. It's the same idea. We have the y component pointing straight up. The x component is to the left. And so if we did the same sort of analysis, we would see that the x component for F2 is equal to F2 times the sine of 22 degrees. The only stipulation there is that that x component is pointing to the left, so that's gonna have a negative value. So we just gotta make sure we wanna put a negative sign there. So those are your two forces acting in the x direction. Let's go ahead and add them together. So you would have your first x component, F1 times the sine of 22, and then minus F2 times the sine of 22. And then this would equal the man's mass. Now we have a sort of weight here. So for now, we're just gonna call that mass and it won't matter because the acceleration of the man in the x direction is actually zero. So on the right-hand side, no matter what his mass is, you're gonna get zero anyways.
So we're now going to sort of simplify this. If we we know the right hand side is zero, so what we could do is add f2 sine of 22 to both sides of that. And so now we have f1 sine of 22 is equal to f2 sine of 22. You can divide both sides by the sine of 22. They effectively cancel out. And this shows us, of course, that f1 is equal to f2. So that's probably going to turn out to be a useful result. We can now apply Newton's second law in the y direction, since we've already done it in the x direction. So we're going to have to go back and draw a right triangle. Let's do it on f1 again. So we had the y component pointing straight up, the x component to the right. We have that right triangle that we witnessed earlier, but this time let's use the cosine function. So if you look at that right triangle, you can see that the cosine of the 22 degree angle is equal to the adjacent side, which we should have labeled f1 y. That would be the adjacent side, divided by the hypotenuse, which is f1. Multiply both sides of the equation by f1, and we can see that the y component of f1 is simply f1 times the cosine of 22 degrees. So that is the y component for f1. We could do a similar setup and find the y component of f2. We would find it equal to f2 cosine of 22 degrees. And now that we have those two y components, we can apply Newton's second law in the y direction. So here we go. Remember, the y component for f1 is pointing upward. So is the y component for f2. It's getting a little cluttered in there, but if we were to draw the y component of f2, it would be pointing straight up like that. So those are going to be positive, whereas the mg force is going to be negative because it's pointing downward. And then in addition, the normal force was pointing upward, so that too will be positive. So here we go. We've got four forces to put into this equation. And why don't we make some room here? So over here, we would have the two upward y components, f1 cosine of 22 plus f2 cosine of 22 plus the normal force, which was 85, minus the weight force, which was 170. We're going to set this equal to the mass times the acceleration. Remember, this individual is at equilibrium, so the acceleration is still zero. That means the right-hand side will still be zero as well. We also recall that F1 was equal to F2. That was a key conclusion from analyzing the forces in the x direction. So for the moment, we're just going to replace F1 with F2 because they're equal. So in fact, we'll just kind of go in here and change it on the fly. And this is nice because now you have some like terms. This would be 2 F2 cosine of 22. And on the other side, what we could do is add 170 to both sides and then also subtract 85 from both sides. So the right-hand side is going to just become 85. And we're going to need to make more room again. And so what we'll do now is just divide both sides of the equation by 2 cosine of 22. Just make sure that your calculator is set to degree mode when you do this. You will see that F2 is equal to about 45.8 newtons. And therefore, so is F1 equal. 45.8 newtons. So far, so good. Now, we need to look at part A. It says to find the smallest possible coefficient of friction between crutches and ground. And to do that, what we're going to next do is another free body diagram, but this time it's going to be showing the forces acting on the crutch tip right here. So if we want to look over there, we can imagine this crutch is pushing down on that tip, sort of down and to the left in this direction. We have a normal force pushing up on it right here. In addition, there's going to be some friction. Now, as this force pushes the tip down and to the left, there's going to be some friction that is opposing that to keep it stationary. And since that force is going down and to the left, the frictional force would be pointing to the right, just like that. So those are the three forces. Let's magnify that to get a better look. So we'll come down here. And there it is right there. So we have that downward force exerted on the tip of the crutch. We have the rightward frictional force and then the normal force acting on the tip of the crutch. We know that that angle was still 22 degrees. Now, furthermore, we have already figured out the force that was exerted in that sort of down into the left direction. Remember from our earlier free body diagram, we had 
a force going up and to the right acting on the man, and then Newton's third law tells us, well, that's the same force that's pushing down and to the left on the tip of the crutch. So in other words, that down and leftward force that we've drawn right here is gonna have the value of 45.8 pounds. So still, it is our job to find this coefficient of friction. So we're gonna to have to analyze the forces again in the x and y direction. For the x direction, we'd have to take a look at the components of this force here. The y component points downward, whereas the x component points to the left. We can see from the right triangle trigonometry here that the x component is opposite to the 22 degree angle. So we know that the fx will equal the f times the sine of 22 degrees. Furthermore, notice that it's pointing to the left, so it's gonna be negative. So analyzing the sum of the forces in the x direction, setting it equal to mass times acceleration in the x direction, we have the following. We have the frictional force, static frictional force, because the crutch is not slipping. It's positive. And then we have minus that x component of that sort of force acting on the tip of the crutch. So that's gonna be that f sine of 22. And then this is equal to the man's mass times acceleration, which all that again is just zero. We can easily solve for the static frictional force if we add F sine 22 to both sides. And again, we know that F has a value of 45.8 pounds. We're gonna multiply that by the sine of 22. Make sure your calculator is in the right mode, degree mode. And when you do this, you can see that the static frictional force is about 17.2 newtons. Now we're gonna look at the forces acting in the y direction. We already have the y direction drawn downward right there, or the y component, I should say, of that F force. Notice it is adjacent to the 22 degree angle. So the y component is gonna equal F times the cosine of 22 degrees. And now we can do the sum of the forces in the y direction, set that equal to MA. We have the upward normal force minus the downward y component, which again is f cos of 22. You set that equal to zero. And when you solve this out, remember f is 45.8 newtons, you're gonna get a normal force of about 42.5 newtons. Now, we can combine the normal force and the static frictional force to find the coefficient of friction, because we all know that the static frictional force is equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. So we just plug these values in. We have 17.2 newtons equals mu s times that normal force. And then when you divide both sides by 42.5, you can see that the static frictional coefficient is roughly 0.40. So that would be the correct answer to part A of the question. The good news is for part B, which wants the magnitude of the compression force supported by each crust, crutch, that was what we had called F1 and F2. And we already found those. They were these values right here. I think what we did though is we called them Newtons. I just realized that. Some of you might have caught that. Those should have been in pounds. So I apologize for that confusion. Those were in pounds, which is a sort of a rarity in these problems. But those would be the correct answers for part B. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it. If not, no worries. I appreciate you taking the time anyways.